In 2011, the state legislature established the adopted WMA program. And the reason they did that was to allow the public to have an active role in the, the maintenance of uh, WMAs. WMAs belong to the public. And it's important that we maintain those for the public, for wildlife, for habitat, and for the environment. And the thing I like best about adopted WMA is it allows individuals to go from users of that public land to stewards of that public land. Yeah, there's three basic levels of adopted WMA. Level one is the most basic. It doesn't involve any hand tools or equipment. And that'd be things like uh, picking up garbage, uh, just keeping the WMA neat. Level two would be things like uh, weed removal, uh, seed collection, things that may require just some minimal tools but no equipment. And then level three is much more advanced. That would require equipment and might include brush removal uh, or mowing of WMAs. Uh, some of the work that we're doing today is uh, the removal of undesirable woody cover. Uh, we're removing fences and we're straightening and replacing boundary signs on WMAs and then just the amount that they can get done. Today we've got over 20 volunteers uh, working a half a dozen hours and we look at what it would take our staff to put in 120, 140, 150 hours. Uh, the volunteer involvement is significant. We were the first chapter I believe in the state of Minnesota to adopt all the WMAs in our county. Whether that's just, just the, from the littlest trash pickup to, to a sign maintenance, to other projects that are much bigger, fences, pervasive tree removal, we spray lots of thistles in the summertime. Every WMA in the county gets touched at least once or twice a year. So we're protecting wildlife that way. We're making it easier for people, of, regardless of whether you're a hunter or a photographer or just a nature viewer, to be able to go onto these sites and know that they're safe, know that there's no iron or steel or wire that you can get into, and it energizes volunteers. No question about it. And so it, it benefits wildlife, it benefits habitat, but it also benefits the organizations that are doing that work because it invigorates their people. And I've seen that in a big way. Our area wildlife manager is on site today and he'll point out this flower or that plant or whatever. And people can become more knowledgeable about restored prairies and native prairies. And people come from all different places and for all different reasons. But I think it just comes down to the, the spots are beautiful and they enjoy working on them. You don't have to be a Pheasants Forever chapter or, or a sportsman's club. Anyone can adopt a WMA, and I think the more people we can get to do that and the more diversity of background that we can get to do that, I think wildlife everywhere and the habitat will benefit. Volunteers lined up this morning taking that photo. Uh, 20 people that are taking time out on a Saturday to, to give time to public land. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. And to be able to preserve uh, pieces of land uh, back into habitat that are going to be that way forever. It, it's incredible. Anyone that wants to learn more about the Adopted WMA program can go onto the DNR website and in the search bar just type in Adopt A WMA and the, the information comes up along with forms that you can fill out uh, to get more information and possibly get involved.